How can believers be a city shining on a hill? Well, before we answer that question, let's put it in context. We know that Jesus calls us to be just that. This expression, a city on a hill, comes to us from the Sermon on the Mount. In the context where Jesus calls believers uh, to be salt and light and to be this city on a hill. And the imagery that I get here is that Jesus is calling us to, to be a community which is set apart from the broader world and yet visible and appealing to the broader world. That is, Jesus does not call us to be a city under a bushel. He doesn't either call us to be a city in the city. We have a real tension in our day where we've, we've, we've sort of swung the pendulum to this place where uh, the church seems to take the view that the best way to have an impact on the culture is to become as much like it as possible. To go out into the watching world and say to them, we're just like you. You are so close to the kingdom. It's just one itty bitty little step. It's not a big deal. You say this prayer, you make this commitment and everything will be good for you, but you can continue to pursue personal peace and affluence and Jesus will help you get there. Yeah, that's not it. In days past, it's often been the case that that set apartness of the city up on the hill has been uh, given to us or promoted in light of things that are of very little significance. Well, I don't want to be like the world, so I'm not going to listen to worldly music, or I'm not going to play cards, or I'm not going to dance. That the distinction between the believer and the world was, well, things that the Bible doesn't call wicked things. But that tells us, or should tell us, where the distinction ought to be. That as we are a city shining upon a hill, what we're doing is we are a people who love each other. And that love that believers have one for another is reflected in living in light of his law. That whole concept, by the way, is not something new that Jesus is delivering. I remember learning something very fascinating when I was in Israel. Our guide reminded us that the nation of Israel is the only place on all of the planet where three different continents intersect. If you go south of Israel, you end up in Africa. If you go north and east of Israel, you end up in Asia. If you go north and west of uh, Israel, you end up in Europe. It was the crossroads of international travel for hundreds, if not thousands of years. God put them there on purpose, but he also cleansed the land. I don't want you to be like them. I want you to be set apart from the world. But they're going to come through here. They're going to come through you. And in fact, they're going to watch your lives, and they're going to be so knocked over, they're going to come pounding on the door wanting to know what your secret is. That's what's supposed to happen with the body of Christ. What if we loved each other and served each other? And this each other, by the way, in this context, is inside the church. Remember when Jesus says, by this will all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. He's not saying, by this will all men know you're my disciples if you love all men. Now, I'm not disputing that we have a duty to love all men. We certainly do. But there's three groups here in this expression from Jesus. There's those who love, who are believers. There's those who are loved, who are believers. And there are those who are not believers, who witness this. The same thing is true of the city on a hill. We need to learn to think more deliberately about what it is that sets us apart. It's different priorities. It's different perspectives. It's submission to the beauty of the word of God, to the law it's the embracing of its grace. It's being an outpost of heaven that others might be drawn in.